Welcome, my listeners. In today's episode, we are going to talk about covenant. Ibuandu. Why do covenant exist? A covenant is a sacred agreement between Okike, man, spirits, and their children, extending to their forthcoming and unborn generations. It can have uh, specific and favorable conditions, thereby eliciting promises to bless, protect, fight for, guide, guard, prosper, multiply, among other promises, as our ancestors and us obey certain conditions. It is usually a formal, solemn, and binding agreement. Therefore, making and keeping covenant qualifies us to receive the blessings that has been assigned to a generation by man and their ancestors. Covenant means Ibandu. And Ibandu means life bond. Yes. This is an Igbo mechanism of social control and adjustment. Ibandu, it is an integral part of traditional Igbo social and political system. A ritual, an alliance between two persons or group of individuals regarded as the strongest and most meaningful bond that can exist. It was used on the group level to validate community contracts and on a personal level to create the ritual bond the ritual bond necessary for social and trade interactions or to affect a genuine recon- reconciliation between people for whom regular relationship was imperative because of kin relationship or common residence in a neighborhood it was also a means of establishing the confidence necessary between strangers who desire to establish relationships that could not be ignored or broken. Ibando was the most serious of the many non-violent coercive mechanisms for ensuring the stability of an Igbo society. The concept of Ibando covenant Literally means life bond. Iba means to bond or tie, while Ndu means life in Igbo language. However, the concept of Igbo Ndu is better understood as a covenant between individuals or groups. The Igbos are predominantly associated with the Igbo Ndu. However, other groups outside their borders also have their own concept for covenant or oath taking. The Igbos are found in the southeastern part of Nigeria. They are very industrious, energetic, enterprising, and they speak the Igbo language. They are basically skilled in merchandising, agriculture, and other economic activities. By the nature of the activities and interaction, there is a high level of social economic interaction among them, even beyond their borders. Hence, such interaction uh, most times give room for mutual and peaceful coexistence, as well as mistrust and conflict. Hence, the need to institute an idea which can help sustain peaceful coexistence of a lasting time that led to Ibando. This practice emanated not only out of fear of the unknown, especially with the knowledge that man is inherently wicked. So it is imperative to check on the wise of men. Convenant or Ibando is entered into to help safeguard the life and confidence of the parties that has entered into the agreement. Another reason for the Ibando is as a result of man's desire to maintain peace 
orderliness and harmonious living among themselves. So where such is existing, there is the need to consolidate such harmony among people. The concept of Ibandu is tied to the knowledge of the existence of a superior or supreme being or deities who are very powerful as to intervene in the affairs of men when they are invited and thus dispense justice to the faulters who break the covenant entered. Well, for any covenant to be potent, in most cases, it is tied to a deity or a god. So, in Alibu, there are many deities that are involved depending on the people concerned. Prominent deities such as Igwe Kala, Amadioha, Ibino Babi, Ahajioko. There are so many others uh, that uh, I will also want to mention their names so that uh, my viewers, uh, my listeners will uh, know what I'm talking about. There are other uh, deities in Ibolan that are involved in Ibandu. Well, why are covenants important? In spirituality, a covenant involves Chuku, our ancestors, that is Ndichi, Ajani, Alosi, Ndimiri, Uwuwu, Akwali Omomo, some would call it uh, Oda Omomo, and many other spiritual guides which entails covenanting in general both in the historical and ancestral sense. It is that solemn promise to engage in or refrain from a specified action. The covenantor is obligated to carry out certain spiritual rites monthly or yearly, either through carrying out a blood sacrifice using animals or abstaining from eating certain food or meat in honor of uh, such covenant, which is a sacred agreement between Chuku ancestors, deities, and their living children. Spiritually, there are specific conditions and promises that qualifies us to receive the blessings involved. When we choose not to keep a covenant, we cannot receive the blessings and promises. Because in covenanting, the same is applicable. Even uh, in important Christian religion. Well, let's talk about the main purpose of a covenant. Every covenant made is established on the basis of a relationship. So I hope you understand. On the basis of a relationship, Mekorita, hmm? conditions and promises, including the consequences. That is, there are consequences when uh, the people default from upholding or keeping a covenant. So that uh, if those uh, conditions are not met, they will face the outcome. Over time, indication shows that each person in the covenant promised to keep his or her own life in its term. That is, uh, I'm trying to say that uh, anybody that is in agreement, uh, that is under covenant, must promise to give his or her own life to keep its terms. That means anything can happen between both people who are under a uh, covenant. If one person defaults, there is a consequence they must face. Therefore, to break a covenant is to invite one's own death as a penalty. There are no more serious relationships than those that are commitment of life itself. Let us talk about um, elements of a covenant. When we talk about elements of uh, a covenant, there are four elements. One is the covenant, two, covenanta, three, covenantee, 
for and witnesses. What am I saying in essence? Two or more parties are involved. Those involved commit themselves to a binding agreement which involves promises or oath. It usually has some physical sign or symbol. It involves a witness or witnesses. It is usually sealed. That means a ceremony or a ritual is performed to enforce it. This means there are two types of covenant. A conditional covenant and an unconditional covenant. A conditional covenant, it is a uh, it is an agreement or a covenant between two or more parties which in fact are equal. The other one, the unconditional covenant, it is a covenant between two or more unequal parties. For example, between uh, Okike. Some call him Chuku. Uh-huh. A deity and his uh, people. Components of a covenant. When we talk about components of a covenant, it involves a lot of things. Those involved commit themselves to a binding agreement as it involves promises or oath. It usually has some physical sign or symbol. It involves a witness or witnesses. It is usually sealed using blood. A ceremony or a ritual is performed to enforce it. Lastly, it has serious and negative consequences that will be experienced by those who break it. Eh? And also, there are benefits for those who keep it. Let's talk about types of oath-taking or covenant in Igbo land. We have Ibando. This is a type of covenant undertaken usually by two or more individuals, not to break a promise, agreement, or divulge a secret to a third party. The process involves pinching of the left thumb and pulling of their blood into a container. Each member is made to repeat the agreement before drinking the missed blood. A drop on the tongue is sufficient. So it means that each member shall decree that a prescribed calamity including untimely death, shall befall him or her if they betray the cause of the group before drinking the missed blood. This kind of covenant is very difficult to break because it involves blood. Many breakers of this type of covenant usually go mad. So Ibando made by members swearing by native doctors prepared charms are easier to break should any member um, decide to opt out. Well, these are the following groups that find uh, Ibando very useful. Number one, a young boy and a girl in love, but so young to get married or are not yet ready to get married. They secretly do Ibando covenant to ensure or to assure each other that they will weather the storm, wait for each other, break parental opposition, and ensure that they, that they marry. A girl traveling abroad to further her education may demand a bando from her lover. Another reason, another kind of, uh, uh, another kind of group that uh, believe in covenanting, members of secret society or occult. New members of secret societies are meant to pass through a bando rituals to ensure their perpetual friendship or membership. This is very important for them. In that some Lily Liver newly initiated members attempt to chicken out when asked to donate the head or lives of their beloved ones for the progress of the work of the societies. Each member is always reminded of the irreversibility of membership. Another group of people are robbery gangs. Members of robbery gangs perform the bando to ensure that none of them tip off the gang or hatches any ambition of stealing their proceeds of crime. So they take an oath to protect and defend one another, not to squeal, that is, uh, reveal their secrets or implicate others if caught by the police. Another people that uh, can easily take this covenant are vigilante group. Members of vigilante groups usually insist on a bando. These, they believe, will make all members stick together in pursuit of criminals 
it makes members resist the temptation of selling out the location or position or their members to under uh, uh, members to police well which could result in heavy fatalities on the side of the security uh, outfit local hunters Ibando helps to control the innate tendency of a greedy um, hunter to shoot a fellow hunter willfully while inside the bush hunting or forest because they can claim that he mistook the colleague for a game or an animal. Ido Abata is a common type of covenant instituted among relatives of common ancestry or parentage. It becomes necessary when there is a palpable suspicion that some relatives plan and execute evil against others. It is done at Umunna, that's Umunna, a group of uh, extended families. Imenne, a group of families within an Umunna, but who descended from the same mother. So, these are the categories of uh, people who can participate uh, in the covenanting. It is a, a means of establishing confidence necessary for a cause for strangers who desire to establish uh, a relationship that could not be ignored or broken. Um, well, let's talk about reasons for entering into covenants in Igbo land. The role covenant plays in Igbo society is that of enforcing social control. Number one, it uh, tries to eliminate deep-seated hatred and calm freedness on issues concerning land disputes, communal or individual squabbles. Number two, the process of Ibando ensures that the parties to a dispute settle such disputes amicably without physical or spiritual attacks on each other. Three, covenant threatens the unity that exists between the individuals, groups, or communities. Four, covenant plays the rule of adjudication as the final process of arbitration in which parties concerned, witnesses, ancestors, and the gods are involved in the process of ensuring peaceful coexistence so that when it is administered, it becomes the final process of peaceful resolution as parties concerned have involved the spiritual world to adjudicate, to adjudicate on their behalf. Another reason is that Ibando checkmates the incidents of witchcraft, a spiritual or physical attacks. So it puts it to a check on the activities of the wicked against the just in the society. Another reason why one enters into covenant is to seek for protection. Yes, a lot of people are treated in the society. So, for them to be safe, there is need for them to enter into a covenant with the person they are afraid of, so that the person will not harm them. Or they enter into covenant with a deity so that the deity will continuously protect them from harm from the people they are afraid of or community they are afraid of. It depends. Another reason for entering into covenant is that uh, a person can use the covenant to ask Chuku to remove sicknesses from family members and the person involved. If, for example, there is a continuous ailment that befalls someone, he can call upon uh, Chuku Okike and covenant with him by telling him to remove that sickness from the family and the person involved. Covenanting based on the liberty to ask for blessing of prosperity, wealth, and other material blessings. That is one of the reasons for people to enter into a bandu. They enter into a bandu to ask for blessing. In the olden days, most families did that. 
their ancestors did that. Another reason is that one can decide to request for long life, children, or any other thing according to their heart's desires in accordance with uh, Chuku, a deity and uh, ancestors' uh, wish. So they wish to have long life. They wish to have children. That is why in so many homes in evil society, Akwaliomu is always there. Because most families have covenant with Akwaliomu. So people who ignorantly go and destroy it, they will be in problem because they are ignorant of the covenant their ancestors and the uh, Chineke had with Akwaliomu uh, before they instituted it. For it to always give them children, success, progress, and uh, all around uh, fruitfulness in life. It is uh, indeed very necessary that we pay attention in our families so that uh, we know what is going on. So that we know why some families are in problem today. So that we can know that before we destroy any ancestral things, we should bear in mind that there is uh, something like a covenant backing it up. I also want to talk about Igba Oyiko. Igbo Oriko, some call it Oriko. Uh, it is a type of covenant. Uh, it derives its covenant powers from the general belief in Igbo land that when all present eat from the same pot or container of a covenant mission, that whosoever that violates the prescribed act is doomed. Igbo Oriko can be done in a community to prescribe prostitution or adultery by married woman. There is also another type of covenant called Ibenne. Ibenne is a covenant forbidding uh, family members from the same mother from planning or doing evil to themselves. You see, there are things that happen in this life. So, to prevent family members from the same mother or father from planning or doing evil to themselves, they enter into a covenant called Ibenne. The mother's breast suckled is believed to be a powerful covenant itself. A killer of a relation is expected to die a shameful death in a most torturous way. So we really have to be careful. Ask about your family's foundation. Ask your parents if there is any kind of covenant entered into. Ask your grandfather, your great-grandfather, if you are opportune to meet them. Always ask questions. Strive to know what is happening in your family. Strive to know about some histories before you make uh, costly mistakes. Especially to these uh, ones that are uh, termed uh, radical born again that they are confused by religion. They think they now uh, they are more holier than the Pope. When they see some ancestral things, they become moved with a, a forced uh, rage or fury, saying that the ancestors are demonic, they are this and that. You better ask questions. No matter how holy you are, no matter how filled with the Holy Spirit or whatever you think you are, because the only thing they share forcefully in this country, in Nigeria, is they are born again. Once you are not born again, you become uh, a potential enemy for those people involved in an uh, imported religion called Christianity. They believe they are radicals, they are fanatics. They can go to any extent, to any length to fight for their God, to fight for J-Boy. That is Jesus. They believe they, they have the ability to fight for him, that he's backing them up. But I want to tell you today that even J-Boy recognizes covenant. Yes. So you have to be very careful. 
Because you that think that your ancestors, they are stupid or they are foolish. You should know they are wiser than you. Our ancestors are wise. You can never undermine or underestimate them. Because they knew Chuku even before the advent of religion. Even before the imperialists came to Africa. Our ancestors, they know who Chuku Okike is. Despite the fact that uh, most people use this appellation, G-O-D. We call him Chuku Chineke Okike Ekeke Rowa. Chuku Okike Abiyama. We know he exists. So not every people uh, who out of ignorance act, they think that uh, maybe Edibia does not acknowledge God. That Edibia is someone who is demonic or fetish. Every good Dibia believes in Chugu and Chineke, the creator. So know it today that if you with your fanatism and the rest of it forcefully break a covenant like destruction of Akwali Omomo, destruction of Ndichie, Obundichie, you are in eh, for a big trouble. You will know that the ultimate price for breaking a covenant is death. To avoid dying, people are compelled to keep to the tenants of the covenant they entered into. But many people these days live longer and more prosperous, even with clear breach of covenant. Why is it so? You will find out maybe why it is so. Well, in all Igbo villages, nobody drugs his or her guards even after entering into a covenant with criminally minded relations. Giving credence to a saying that Mpusha Boyojo, meaning that uh, being alert is not a sign of fear. If you think that these people uh, that destroy covenant that they are still alive because they destroyed it and nothing happened to them, it is as a result that uh, maybe the kind of covenant they entered into is not the one that uh, has dealt penalty as is a reward if the covenant is violated. It's as simple as that. So don't think that this person went and destroyed this thing. Oh, nothing is happening to him or her. It depends. That is why you have to find out. The agreement before the co a covenant was instituted so that you will save your life, save your um, unborn generation, save yourself. But for the ones that uh, involves two lovers, in the case uh, of two lovers, the penalty for a default where one breaks the covenant abandons the relationship could either be madness, barrenness, inability to hold on any relationship, or even death. Even though we are a deity like the Amadeo is involved, has a very disastrous penalty for the defaulter. This can either be, uh, the person can be either stricken down by thunder, mysterious illness that defies medical solution, and so on and so forth. So the process of appeasement by the defaulter is tedious. This is so, as people will not want to associate associate with such a person for fear of a reprisal attack on them from the gods. It is only when a clearance is gotten from the gods through divination on how to appease the deity and also on how to reintegrate the person into the society before he or she is allowed access to people. Therefore, the gods will determine the items for appeasement, which most times are enormous. It is the chief priest of the deity and the Dibias that handle such um, appeasement uh, rites. Also, the person will do some rites that will allow him access to people. That is Uriko. Hmm? In some societies, they have different ways of uh, doing their appeasement. I will talk more on that so that you understand where you should stand, huh? you should understand that a defaulter 
is always known when mysterious occurrence begins to afflict their lives, such as death, infertility, sickness, so that you will know if you violate any covenant.